Hello, welcome back. My name is Yenja and I'm a memory champion and a software engineer, but you probably already knew that if you're subscribed. So if you're not, please subscribe to see more of these videos and help me pay my bills. Although I'm currently on a boat that makes it seem like I don't need help paying my bills. Because after graduating from one of the top coding boot camps in the US, I was able to make so much money coding that I bought this boat. And this may or may not be a lie. This video is heavily inspired by my best friend in the entire world who is looking into going into coding with no prior coding experience. And I bet there are a lot of people who are in the same position as her. I mean, I was in the same position as her earlier in the year where it feels very confusing about what to do, what is important, what is bull, what you should prep, what you can do from home. So I made this video for y'all. So the first thing you want to do is that you want to get a really good hoodie. Everybody knows that to be a coder, you need to have a gray or black hoodie and you need to wear it over your head like this to signal to the outside world that you're not social and you don't want to talk to anyone and that your code is more important than anything else on earth. Basically, you just want to look as much as Mark Zuckerberg as possible. You also want to find an ungodly amount of sunscreen to put on your face. And if Congress ever asks you questions about your code, you should just answer very monotonously and be really sweaty and not seem human or approachable at all. No. Okay, you don't need to do any of that. The first question on everybody's mind is where do you even start? If this is like your 10th video that you're watching and you're just in analysis paralysis and trying to, <laughs> trying to find the most optimal solution, stop watching these types of videos. I'm I mean, obviously finish watching mine. And why that's important is because watching videos and reading tutorials will only get you so far. At some point you do need to have practice, preferably a ton of practice. So just pick a language, pick a resource, and then stick with it. And if you're completely new and you're wondering what language, what resource, then I would say you should start with an interactive coding platform. It could be Code School, Code Academy, Free Code Camp. They basically show you a little bit of an explanation, go over briefly what the code looks like, and then ask you to do something similar based on the principles they just taught you. But I personally preferred Codecademy and then I went a little bit into Free Code Camp and then I started doing one called Code Wars which was less interactive and more competitive because that's the kind of person I am. So you want to choose the resource that fits your learning style. Now the benefit of this is that you get to have a very hands-on experience, you get to practice, you get immediate feedback because if you write like one thing off then it'll tell you that it's off and ask you hey maybe did you add a comma in a place where you shouldn't have which is like sometimes what I feel like 95% of coding is. Now the drawback I will say is that sometimes it gives you the impression that you're learning more than you actually are because the explanation is just there. You just learned it and then you get to do it a few seconds later, but you're actually just copying code from one side of the page to the next side and just rewriting it. But I also think that's actually what coding is. Another way to start is to watch lectures. Now a lot of people recommend the Harvard CS50 computer science class and that can be helpful if you're the type of person who really wants to understand the big picture idea of how things work. Now, me, I'm more of a person who in the beginning needs to get into the nitty gritty, so I skipped that to be honest. It was only until I started getting really up and going with the code that I started looking at lectures. Now, watching lectures, something that I will say for people who are antsy or are native speakers of whatever language the video is in or want a lot of information in one go is to watch lectures at double speed. That way you can be interested and engaged for a longer period of time. And if you feel like it's coming at you too fast, don't be afraid to pause or watch the video at half speed. How much time should I spend in the beginning? I would say that you can start with 30 to 90 minutes a day maximum because I think in the beginning when we're so interested in something, we try to do lots of hours a day and we feel like, hey, we're in a pandemic, we might as well do it lots of hours a day. But that can lead to quick burnout and also your brain needs to have some time to process the information and to mull over it, think on it, sleep on it. I know that binging something feels like we're taking it in so well, but the truth is that we learn better when it is spread out over a longer period of time. Now another question is what language? If you search this, you're going to have so many differing opinions and it's because languages go in and out of fashion. There are different ways to communicate with computers and the best language is 
the language that is most relevant to you. Some of the standard languages are Python, Java, and JavaScript. What I would suggest, especially for beginners, is to pick a language and only one language and get really good at that one because then it'll be easier to apply that to different programming languages. Now I wanted to learn JavaScript because I wanted to get into a very specific coding bootcamp and a very specific program where I knew that the main curriculum was in JavaScript. I also chose JavaScript because it seemed fairly easy compared to a lot of other languages and I think that initial confidence boost of feeling like you can do something and create something functional was really helpful. And if I had learned another language first, I would have probably given up earlier. Which leads me to what's your why? Now you might want to learn how to code because you just want to make an app that's funny, or you want to get a job that pays a hundred thousand bazillion dollars a day. I don't think that there's a why that's negative unless your why is very nefarious and you're like ranking women based on how hot they are, then I think it's a little bit shady but that's just me. If your goal is to get a computer science degree, I mean, good for you. I will say a lot of the people at the coding bootcamp said that they came from computer science backgrounds and felt that they learned more at the bootcamp than they did from their university time. So having your why is really helpful because it will motivate you when it gets tough and coding gets tough a lot of the time. I'm somebody who thinks that I have a knack for it and I find it difficult every single day. <laughs> there, there isn't one single day where I'm coding where I'm like, everything is going swimmingly. So when you have that why, it'll be easier to go through those pitfalls and those difficult obstacles and challenges and when you feel like this isn't working out. Also knowing your why will help you choose a language, help you choose resources, etc. If you know, for example, that you are trying to apply to a specific bootcamp, look at which programming language that bootcamp has and start learning how to program in that language. Now to help you get into the right mindset and view your yourself as somebody who can code, I would also suggest to learn to type faster. There are some apps for it and it really helps because sometimes, especially in school, if you're pair programming, it can be very frustrating if you don't type very fast and the other person has to watch you type. I've discussed this with a couple of senior programmers who say that it doesn't really matter once you get into higher level of coding, but as a junior developer, it will save a lot of time, especially because a lot of job interviews as well as assessment interviews to get into schools, you're very often going to have to do a timed exam. And if you type faster, that is hugely, tremendously helpful. Now studying from home, I have an entire video about how to study from home because I started my coding bootcamp in this very boat in the 90 degree Fahrenheit heat, it felt like, and it was pretty difficult, but there are some mental health things and other things you can think about. I will also be talking about it in a study course that I'm launching in January, 2021. So I hope you found this video useful and I wish you so much luck in your coding journey. If you liked it, please subscribe. It really means a lot to me. If you have lots of opinions about what I said, I'm sure you do because every programmer does. Please write them in a mindful way in the comments down below and there's probably going to be lots of advice in the comments as well. Also shout out to Chassis and The Come Up for creating great introductory videos. I recommend you watch their videos as well. We kind of say the same things because I was inspired by them. You can also download a one pager full of resources and guides into coding down below. If you want to see more of these videos, let me know if you're more interested in a video about how to get into a coding bootcamp or how being a memory champion helps me with learning how to code. I'm sure you're going to pick but we'll see. Let me know in the comments down below and see you next week. Bye!